Hey everyone, this is Phil, and today we'll talk about the Fuji GW690 III. Uh, this camera is often called uh, the Texas Leica because of its size. It is definitely substantial. Uh, if you want to look at that next to a 35 millimeter camera, then that'll get across. And that is also why I have actually owned this camera three times and sold it twice. And recently I took the, this camera out to get some shots as samples to sell it again. But unfortunately the samples just turned out too good and I couldn't let go of it. So uh, let's take a, a look at some uh, of the shots that I've gotten with this camera and then we'll talk about the camera itself as well. The Fuji GW690 series was first released in uh, 1978 as a successor uh, to its previous interchangeable lens uh, 6x9 camera series. The reasoning for this apparently was that uh, all the other focal lengths, uh, apart from the 40 millimeter equivalent, uh, such as is on this camera, did not sell as much and uh, didn't really warrant uh, the further development. And also because you, ha you don't have that lens mount and you don't have uh, all the mechanics for coupling that lens, uh, that gives it less uh, failure points and uh, makes it a more reliable camera. And this is a big factor because, of course, this was intended as a professional camera, says it right here. Uh, and uh, it is mo mainly uh, built to be a camera uh, to take pictures of large groups of people uh, because it was used uh, in applications where uh, tourist groups uh, would take their group picture uh, with this camera. And of course they wouldn't take it themselves. They would have a, a professional photographer with a tripod set at a spot where the tourists could take their picture and then they would move on and they would get the, the picture on the same day. So of course uh, the 6x9 format uh, used in this camera is the biggest common format uh, that is taken on uh, medium format. Of course uh, there's also 6x17 cameras uh, but that's, I would say, a very niche uh, application uh, and the largest format that you commonly find on medium format or 120 film cameras is the 6x9. These cameras were actually also available in 6x8, 6x7 and 6x6 formats. Um, and uh, there's also a second version that comes with a wider angle lens. So there's quite a few variations to this camera. Uh, it seems to have been quite a popular option for professional photographers. And uh, this is the last iteration of that series. And it is quite available and not as crazy expensive. It is expensive, but it's not crazy expensive like the, for example, the Mamiya 6 or Mamiya 7. Uh, but it is quite comparable in uh, quality, I would say, to those cameras. And this is, of course, the third iteration of that series. Uh, so the first one was uh, released in uh, 1978. And then the second iteration of this uh, camera was released in 1985, which, in my opinion, is actually the best looking of the, the three. But it's also a little heavier uh, than the uh, G. W693 uh, because the uh, 693 as you can probably tell uh, uses a lot of plastic parts so uh, the main casing on this camera is plastic and uh, it does not feel as substantial as it actually is uh, because it has quite a good grip and it uses a lot of uh, plastic parts so although it is a humongous camera it doesn't actually feel that heavy. Uh, the main reason why I didn't uh, bring it along as much as I wanted to is just the size. It just doesn't fit in my bag as comfortable as I would have liked. So the lens on this camera is a uh, Fujinon uh, 19 millimeter f3.5, uh, which is comparable uh, to about 40 millimeters or 39 millimeters on uh, 35 millimeter film. And that is actually a focal length that I quite appreciate. Uh, I own several 40 millimeter lenses for my uh, 35 millimeter cameras. My 
first uh, camera that I rebought in 35 millimeter was actually a uh, Olympus uh, 35 PC, uh, which also has a 40 millimeter uh, lens. And also the standard lens, uh, the Minolta uh, Rokor lens uh, that comes with the uh, Lights Minolta CL, which is my favorite uh, 35 millimeter camera, uh, is also 40 millimeter. So it's a focal length that I am quite uh, comfortable with, uh, but if you're not comfortable with that 40 millimeter, then uh, you might want to consider a di different option or go for, uh, for example, uh, the wide lens option uh, with this camera, because it is not a uh, interchangeable lens camera. It is a fixed lens uh, camera. The shutter uh, on the GW693 uh, is a Copal uh, lens mounted uh, shutter from a five hundredth of a second all the way down to one second. And then it has a T mode as well, uh, which is of course, uh, you open the shutter with one press and then close it again with the second press of the shutter. Uh, and it does have a secondary uh, shutter button on uh, the side of the lens as well. So that is also very handy. Uh, the only automatic uh, feeling feature on this camera is that it does not let, let you uh, press the shutter button if it's not loaded with film or if it's closed. So if you open this up, then you can uh, fire the shutter even with no film inside, uh, but normally you would have to have uh, film inside. The shutter sound uh, is audible, uh, but it's not as bad as, uh, for example, on a SLR camera like uh, the Pentax 6x7. Uh, so if you want to listen to that. It's actually quite a it's actually quite a, a quiet, pleasant uh, shutter, I would say. It does, does have a little springy sound to it. And uh, then of course the winding mechanism ha does have a very audible ratchet to it. The Fuji uh, GW690 does not have a light meter or any form of automatic exposure. It is a completely manual camera. So you would set your aperture, then you would sit, set your shutter speed and uh, that's your settings and you don't have any automatic uh, features, which is of course uh, something that makes it popular on the uh, used market because there's no electronics inside. This is a fully manual and uh, mechanical ca camera, which makes it less prone uh, to failure. And also because it is mechanical, it's also easier to fix. And these were made until fairly recently. Uh, this was only released in uh, 92. Uh, so it's not that old a camera model in comparison to others. Uh, and there's still parts out there and you can still get it fixed if you do have an issue of any sort. So that is definitely a perk uh, to this camera model. And uh, it does make it a more desirable uh, camera on the used market. And what also makes it uh, de desirable is people calling it Texas Leicas. <laughs> because, <laughs> although I don't really think it looks like a Leica, it just looks like a, a upsized uh, rangefinder camera. Uh, it is clearly a very different build. Uh, but people calling it that makes it more desirable in itself. But I do think it is worth uh, the price that it goes for, especially compared to other medium format cameras on the market, because it takes really, really good pictures. Um, it is a very, very good modern lens design. Uh, it has, of course, it is of course a coated lens. It is designed to bring out as much detail as possible because as I mentioned, it is designed for professionals shooting large groups of people uh, that would need every, everyone in focus basically. So uh, let's pop this open and take a look inside. So when you pop open the camera chamber, uh, you will see there's of course the two uh, spool chambers. Uh, those have a little red button that you use to unlock the spools and then you can take them out. Uh, and that is of course the same uh, mechanism that you would have on a uh, Mamiya uh, 120 film camera and also very similar to what you have on the, on the 
Pentax uh, 6x7. And then, uh, of course, the winding mechanism goes left to right, uh, which is as it should be. Uh, and you can see the, the chamber for the uh, camera lens is quite deep. So it's definitely a more substantial camera than the folding old style 6x9 cameras, uh, such as my Bessa 6x9 RF. And then also it has a very quirky feature up here. It has an, a built-in uh, spirit level on the top plate. So this was clearly intended to be on a tripod and uh, you can level it uh, just with the camera itself. Uh, if you forgot your mounted level or whatever. <laughs> and uh, that actually makes it uh, quite easy to use for, I guess, those uh, professional group photographers and also, of course, for landscape. Um, so although it is not the perfect landscape camera because it's, it's quite substantial to haul around, I do believe it would turn out really, really nice images. If you put some Velvia in there, RIP, uh, then I think you would get great pictures. What I quite like about the 6x9 format is that it is the same dimensions as a 35mm film. So if you have 35mm uh, cameras or 135 cameras in your arsenal and you want to take medium format ca uh, photos, that go along with those, they're really easy to mix because they're the same dimensions. You don't have to switch your mindset uh, when you're taking one or the other out. And it makes quite a seam seamless uh, transition. And I also prefer uh, the dimensions or the proportions of that film format to uh, 6x6 or 6x7. And that's a personal thing. Uh, I just don't like uh, composing in that more squarish uh, format. So that was my quick look at uh, the GW690 Mark III. Uh, I am quite a big fan of this camera. Uh, it is substantial, uh, although it has a, a plastic build. You do feel it, it does feel a little plasticky, uh, but it has a good grip. Uh, it is lighter than the all metal uh, GW692 uh, that was before it. So it's easier to haul around, uh, but of course, do keep in mind, this is a very substantial camera and you will need a lot of room for it in your bag. And uh, also, if you're a, a photography YouTuber like me <laughs> and uh, you carry around this and a 35 millimeter camera and a digital camera on top of that, it does get quite crowded in that bag. Um, so on. So fortunately, uh, the bag that I currently use, uh, the Breviday uh, jumper backpack, uh, link in the description, uh, is big enough uh, to carry this around uh, along with my other gear, but it is quite cramped in there. So what do you think about this camera? Uh, have you used one of these uh, or the previous versions? Uh, are you interested in it? Uh, what do you think about it? Let me know in the comments. Uh, I'm always looking forward to hearing from you. Uh, thank you for watching today. Check out my print shop. Uh, there's a few photos from this camera as well in my print shop on darkroom.com. And uh, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you.